What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're continuing our series on using GeoScatter to scatter objects in Blender by talking about some of the performance things you can do to improve performance. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So remember that this series is teaching you how to use GeoScatter to scatter objects in Blender. If you wanna get GeoScatter, you can do that through my link. That's the cgessentials.com slash scatter. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, I will receive a commission. But in this video in particular, we're gonna talk about some of the things that you can do in order to improve the performance of GeoScatter because you're basically adding a ton of stuff in your viewport that can really slow down your computer. I will also link to this page in the, op uh, the, in the documentation that talks about how you can do optimization um, just this is a really good visual way of seeing how all of this works. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at our viewport right here. And so one of the things that you need to be aware of is what's displayed in your viewport can be limited by your machine. And so if we come in here and we toggle in our statistics, you can see information about what's being displayed in the scene right? And the number of things in your viewport are going to tax your computer depending on how much you have in here. So for example, if we look at one of these preset scatters, right? You can see how this is going to tell us the estimated number of instances that are going to be placed on this surface, right? So it checks our surface area, it checks our scatter density, and then it tells us the estimated count. So let's say, for example, that we just wanted to drag in maybe a grass object, right? So I'm just going to drag in a little grass object from the free plant library. But if I select this, Right, notice how that one object significantly increased the amount of geometry that's in this scene. Well, if I click on the option for scatter objects and scatter it along this surface, notice how this is going to create a ton of additional objects in here, right? It's got like 18,000 objects in our scene now. And so that can get to be a lot more really quickly, right? Like if I bring up this density, notice how the number of objects is increasing by a lot over here. Um, all of that to say, displaying all of this in your scene can be very graphically heavy, right? And so what can happen is very quickly, GeoScatter can start running really slow. And so I wanted to talk about some of the ways that we can improve our performance inside of GeoScatter, right? And so let's go ahead and we're going to drop this back out. And let's say we were to use a simple biome. So I'm just gonna open my biomes and I wanna drop something in that has both plants and grasses. So let's say that we brought in this rock plane right here. So I'm just gonna click on the plus button right here and notice how when I click on the plus button, that's going to import this biome into my scene. Now when it imports the biome into our scene, the first thing you're gonna notice is it's not just dumping all of the geometry in here, right? It's not just showing every single thing. You're getting a ton of these bounding boxes in here um, that are really helping with your performance just to kind of keep things from becoming unmanageable. But you can see how my scene is significantly slowing down when I first bring this in. And so the, the easiest way to improve your performance when you bring these in um, is going to be the obvious, right? You can go into your system list under the tweak settings and you can just hide things in your viewport. Right, so for example, um, there's probably a lot of geometry contained inside of these plants. So what I could do is I could toggle the plants off just by clicking on the option right here to hide in viewport, right? I can just toggle them off in my viewport and that is going to really help my performance. And notice how my computer, which is probably about as high end as you can get without going completely insane with your computer, is still having trouble showing all of this. So what I can do is I can scroll in here and I can just keep toggling these off like this. And notice how my viewport is going to get significantly faster as I do this, right? But it's still kind of slow. I mean, you could come in here and you could toggle pretty much every one of these off if you wanted to, um, but that's going to help improve your performance. Note that as long as these cameras are in here, um, this is still going to render out the full geometry. But even with all of this toggled off, my scene is still incredibly slow. So I'm gonna toggle all of these down to basically nothing like this. And notice how 
my computer is still displaying this, but it's definitely working hard, right? Like orbiting and moving around isn't very fast um, at all, but you can use this in order to toggle kind of individual objects like these on and off um, in order to start improving the performance in your scene. Now, another thing that you can do with these objects is you can set them to display as something else. So for example, let's say like, I feel like these this gravel is still running too slow. Slow. So what I can do is I can take this object and I can scroll down to the option for display and I can check the box for display as. Now, when I check the box for display as, what this is going to do is this is going to give me the ability to display objects as different things, right? So I can display these as a convex hull. I can display them as a bounding box. Basically what I'm doing, and you can kind of see these in here, it might be a little bit easier if I jump over into solid mode like this. Notice how it's taking this geometry and instead of displaying it as geometry, it's displaying it as a bounding box. So if I was to come in here and set this as display as, what this is going to do is this is going to display my branches as these polygons in here as well. So you can use this in order to take these objects and set them to display in your viewport as a placeholder, but then in your render, it's going to display as um, an actual plant. So this one's kind of doing the same thing. Notice how if I was to change this to bounding boxes, um, it's going to look that way. If I set this to whatever, um, you can definitely do that. So you can set these as points. You could also set your own custom placeholder, which I don't necessarily want to do, but you can definitely do that. And so one thing about this is now, let's say that I was to add a camera and render it out because you might be thinking like, okay, great. So we've got all this in here, but it doesn't look very good um, in my scene like this. And you'd be correct, um, but what you're gonna notice is all of these objects, if you look in your scatter system right here, are set to render out in an actual rendering. So let's say that I was to do a shift A and we're just gonna add a simple sun just cause that's easy. And go ahead and jump into material preview mode just so we can kind of see what we're doing in here. We'll go ahead and we'll turn our light up a little bit and then we'll jump back into solid mode. And so basically what we've done is we've just set this up with a very simple sun right here. But if we jump over and do an actual render of our image, it's going to render this out um, with the full on geometry. So if I click on render image, this is going to come through and this is going to load this up and it's going to actually render it out. And it might take a while because we've got a lot of geometry in here. All right. And so if you look at this, like obviously the scales are off and things like that, but you can see what this does, right? Is this actually comes in here and it renders out these objects, not the placeholders that are in your scene right? So it's rendering the trees. It's rendering everything that was set as a placeholder or toggled off in your display. It's still being rendered in full on render mode. Um, meaning that, um, you can work with it in your viewport like this while still getting this full on render. Now, another thing that you can do, right, is when you're first bringing these objects in. So when you go into your biome scatter, you open up that window, notice how this will usually pop up a security warning, meaning that it's going to tell you that it's going to generate a ton of these different instances and you can actually toggle this on um, in different ways, right? So you can set this to hide 90% of the instances. You can hide instances invisible to your camera, which we're going to talk about in a minute. We're all, you can also set objects to display as bounds in your scene as well. So that's another way to approach this is just kind of pay attention to your security as you're bringing things in. Now with these different scatter systems, notice how you also have the ability right here to set as default what those objects are created, right? So let's say that I got rid of this entire scatter system. So I'm gonna get rid of the whole thing because it's a lot of geometry and we'll go back into material preview mode for right now. And so when you bring in a new object like this, you can set this using the settings right here. You can say, all right, when we bring in these objects, I want you to set them as bounds, meaning I don't want you when I scatter this object to bring in the full geometry, I want you to bring it in using the proxy, right? So if I select um, this little grass piece right here, which I'm actually going to move over here, right? But if I tell it, okay, when I scatter this object, bring it in as bounds, then I click on scatter. 
Notice what that does is exactly that. It brings it in as a bounds object rather than the full on geometry like this. So even though I brought in however many of these, I don't know where my statistics went, even though I brought in 18,000 of these, it's not displaying the full geometry and so I can still work in my scene. So using these presets and setting scatter visibility can be very important so that you don't accidentally crash your computer when you're bringing in large amounts of objects like this. All right, so I've got some low poly grass um, that came with the bag of pie add-on that I'm gonna add in here. So low poly grass would be good for demonstrating the way that this works. So let's say that I wanted to scatter this object on the surface. And in this case, I don't want this to come in as bounds. I want this to come in as the object. It's low poly, um, so I ought to be fine. Um, so these are pretty low poly, but you don't really need to render all of this, right? Really what you need to render is you need to render the things that you can see based on your camera. And so one of the cool features that's contained inside a GeoScatter is you can actually use your camera um, in order to mask out where objects are going to be. So that feature is going to be called, um, and so that's what's going to be known as culling. And so what you can do is you can tap the end key and go over into GeoScatter and you want to scroll down and you want to look for the option for visibility. And so within visibility, what you want to do is you want to check the box for camera optimization. And so when you check the box for camera optimization, what that's going to do is that's going to use your camera in order to cull out objects that you don't want. So if I uncheck this, notice how you're showing all this grass everywhere. Well, you don't really need all your grass everywhere. You just need the grass that you can see, right? So you can toggle this frustum culling on and off like this um, in order to use your camera and what it sees to show or hide different areas. And so you can definitely come in here and make some changes. So like if I use this field of view boost, Right, notice how I can use the field of view boost to set my X and Y in here. So if you have something where you just kind of like see some gaps along the edges, you can use this field of view boost and notice how this kind of moves outside of your camera location right here. And one of the cool things about this is notice how this is adjusting dynamically, right? So as I move around, um, it's actually adjusting what's being culled out based on where my camera looks. Now, obviously you don't want to do too much of that because um, if you have heavy geometry, this is still going to take some time. Um, but there's some other options in here too, things like distance culling. What distance culling is going to do is it's basically going to cull out objects based on their different distance from the camera. So if I look at this from a top down standpoint, right? Notice how I'm going to drop down in here so you can see it a little bit better, but notice how you can set this where it starts culling out objects based on their distance from the camera, right? So notice how as I bring that back, um, cause a lot of the time when you're in your camera view, um, after a certain distance, you can't really see this detail anyway. So what you want to do is you want to use this to kind of like cull that that um, that out, but it's got kind of this like transition area in here, right? Where it goes from full to um, not full amounts of detail. So you can use this in order to set, instead of you having, like if I set this to 93 and 93, right? Then it's just gonna cull everything out at 93. But if I drag this back, notice how it's gonna use almost like a gradient effect to set how strongly this is hiding these objects right here. So. Another cool tool that you can use is what's known as occlusion culling. All right, so let's say you have a scene like this one where you've got like a wall or something like that. Well, what you can do is you can toggle on occlusion culling. What occlusion culling is going to do is it's going to basically, based on the objects that you have in your scene, it's going to hide them. And so there is an option in the occlusion culling to try to use surfaces. It's not working for me for some reason. I'm not sure why, but what you need to do is you need to toggle it over to either colliders or surfaces and colliders. And then what you can do is you can take the objects that are going to occlude things. You can drop them in here. Well, notice how as soon as I do that, this is going to basically use the occlusion from my scene or from that object in here to hide objects live inside of Blender. So that way, when you're in here trying to do a render of this object, right, it's going to basically hide everything that you can't see in your camera view. So that could be a massive, massive amount of stuff 
right? Where if we toggle this camera optimization off, notice how we've got all this extra stuff in here. As soon as we toggle this optimi optimization on, then um, it's going to basically use your camera in order to mask out everything that you don't need so that you're not doing additional work in your rendering. And note that within the visibility settings themselves, um, you can also reduce the density manually. So um, within the visibility of this um, system right here, this random grass system, if I toggle the box for reduce density, that's going to lower the density that's in your viewport, right? From a visibility standpoint, you could also set a max amount of something, right? So you could say you can only show 25,000 instances or something like that. Um, but the reduced density is just gonna come in here and it's gonna allow you to set a percentage, right? So I can set this to reduce my instances in here by 90% within my viewport, but then if I toggle that off, you can see how there's still a lot more of those that are gonna show up in rendered mode. So um, you can use this in order to um, control the number of objects that are inside of your scene in Blender. And so another cool feature inside of the display function, which we didn't talk about before, is say that I was to come in here and I was to scatter a grass system on this surface, right? So I'm gonna bring in like a full geometry grass system. So we'll use this uh, this detailed bag of pie grass object right here. It doesn't really matter what you use, but say that we were to scatter that on our surface, right? So I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna scatter it like this. Well, one of the cool things that you can do with this system is within the display as settings right here, right? We can set this to display whatever, your bounding box, your uh, placeholder, whatever you want this to be, right? And you can set this as different placeholders depending on what you want. Well, you can check the box right here for reveal near camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this other system off so we can see this a little bit better. But as we scroll down, notice how you have the option, if you set your distance from your camera, right? Notice what this is gonna do is within a certain distance in your scene as you move your camera around, and I'm gonna go back to view and we're going to lock our camera to view, but notice how as we move around in our scene, and you can set the way that this updates, I think it might be set on manual right now, um, but you can set this where as soon as you refresh this, notice how it's going to adjust what visibility is shown in here. You can also set this to be on halt, right? So if I move my camera like this, it'll recalculate it when I halt. But notice what that's doing is that's revealing the full geometry from a certain distance from my camera in my scene as well. So you can use this in order to see full geometry of things that are closer to your camera um, while still using those uh, low poly proxies in the distance like this. And so one other cool function that's in here is say you just wanna preview just a little part of this. You can check the box for preview area under visibility and you can define an area. So if I click and drag in here like this, and then I hit enter, what that's going to do is that's going to just show me a preview in the area that I define, right? So say that we took this whole thing and we only wanted to show a little bit of it just so we can get an idea of the way that it's going to work. You can just define that area, hit the enter key, and it's only going to show that and nothing else. So you can use this in order to quickly preview just a portion of your scene as well. Um, without showing the whole thing. And then when you're done, you can just uncheck the box for preview area to toggle the whole thing back on. So that's a good way to kind of look at the way that lighting is going to work without showing this whole thing in your scene. All right, so this is one of those things where you're probably gonna use a combination of these in order to improve the performance of GeoScatter, but you're going to have to use these just because there's no computer in the world that can display this much geometry without slowing down, making it harder to work in your workspace. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these performance improving options. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.